morning, friends. So, just giving you a little recap. We got the head on and everything torqued down last night. And I was going through some footage. And it looks like I ripped out, I'm not sure, maybe turn line or something to this pump. So I'll show you guys here in a second. So I noticed when I was editing some videos last night that I ripped off this piece right here. I believe it's just like an overflow tube because it's kind of like loose. Yeah, I ripped it off when I pulled the head off. I didn't even notice I was going to mess that up so one thing to account for when removing these heads so where is this line going to i have no clue <laughs> so yeah it looks like it's just a drain line yeah believe it's just an overflow so like if you're on a steep hill because this pump fills up full of diesel and I think if you're on a steep hill um, maybe side hilling maybe this might drain oh, either way I gotta fix it so I'm gonna run the town and get the parts for that because it is Sunday and the hardware store closes pretty early uh, I'm gonna try to get this out real quick but I don't know if my easy out will work for that or if I don't even fit so let's see if we can get this thing out real quick don't have an easy out so hopefully this will work I don't have much of an arsenal for machine tools so bear with me Let me pop that off. I don't want to be hitting any metal pieces into that injection pump, so we'll take this off real quick. That's what I like. Well, this gasket looks reasonable. Still smells like diesel. I was taking my time trying not to mess anything up on this project, but I was working in the dark because it's going to rain in a couple days, so I was trying to get this done. Up messing it up. Oh yeah, definitely could use some new filters. Oh, you know what that does? I think that lets the air go out when you prime it. Don't really need to fix it, but I don't want that squirt of diesel out on the head and then starting a fire when I'm on a hill or working in the summer. So I'm gonna try to get that out. Might have to go get an easy out. Just for now, I'm gonna put this back on there. So no debris gets in there. Well, maybe if I get PB blaster in this little hole, it'll seep in a little better. Yeah. Okay, so now that I know these metal chunks aren't gonna go into the injection pump. We can get a little violent here. Oh, the thing's gone. <laughs> what a pain. I don't even know if I can get a drill bit in here. This is what I'm working with here. There's no space. Oh my god. So I think it's only gonna leak when I unscrew this. You know what? I'm not going to mess with this for now. I want to make sure this transmission on this machine works. I'll just have to keep an eye on this. Because this is going to be like an all day thing here. 
I think the best fix for me is I could get an easy out and take it out, but there's no space for the drill bit, so I can't drill. So I'd have to cut my drill bit in half or make a get a real short drill bit. And I gotta run the town to get a new fitting. So by the time I do that, I'll be 50, 60 dollars in parts because those easy outs are not cheap. And the easy out might not fit either because it's so close. And I don't want to take the valve cover off and get a bunch of metal all over my valves I just cleaned out. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe just for now, when I decide to flush the air out of here with this valve, I'm going to be real careful and I'm going to probably get a board or something or a piece of cardboard so it goes so I can deflect the diesel down instead of all over the engine something just for temporary maybe I can poke a straw in there and let it come out here or something but I, th I think we should just see where the drivetrain is on this machine because if I have to tear into the finals or the transmission the clutches uh, it's going to be a long journey so I kind of want to know where I'm at with this thing so I'm going to skip that for today and we're just going to work on flushing out the tractor and see if I get this thing fired up. So I got some gas. I'm going to let the gas soak into this filter and uh, the intake housing so I can get that serviced. And I still need this research on how to service this. So I'm going to go do that real quick and get the uh, fluids so I can get some oil in this because it does have diesel in the block still. and I think I still have some diesel in the, the cooling passages as well that I have to drain. And then we're going to put new oil in there. I'm going to service this injection pump. It has pretty good looking oil in it, but I'm just going to go through it, replace that. That way all the fluids are changed. And then I'm going to flush out the radiator with detergent because the guy I bought it from put some kind of like, it's like he had some, some kind of weird like an oil container that filled up full of water and he put it in there when we were trying to start it so yeah you're not supposed to put oil in the radiator so some kind of red like oil like two stroke oil or something i don't know so i gotta flush that out before i can start doing the rust flush i believe so i'm gonna flush out the oil and stuff and then hopefully i can i'll probably do two flushes down here with just water jugs and then Hopefully that'll be good enough for it to, to run cool enough to where I can get it up to the house and use the hose and get that flush going on. And then I'm trying to look for some additives to help get that rust out of there. I'm not sure if I want to go on an acidic route because this thing has such bad rust. I'm afraid that it'll just get demolished and start leaking um, again. So drop a comment down below if you the viewers have any idea on how to flush out this thing um i was i did some research and it looks like you're supposed to run electricity like just soak the whole block in the head and run electricity through it and it'll just i think it just turns the rust and the iron and you pour it out and then um some people said that you can use phosphoric acid but that's really acidic and i don't want it to eat away at the whole block and then then I got to worry about neutralizing it so it's not just eating away the whole time. So, and then the other option is uh, Vapo Rust. And I got some, uh, what was it, the Radiator Molly uh, Radiator Flush. I'm going to try that first. Um, but I think that's just more for a regular flush, not rust. So, okay, I'm going to go get the stuff so we can finish working on this dozer and get this thing completed. Hopefully, we can get it fired up. Okay, so we got. All the diesel flushed out of the engine. It was about six, seven gallons or so. It actually looked pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with the, how it came out. I would have showed you guys, but I had to mix it with the intake gas from the dozer, so it got real muddy. But it was actually pretty clean. Just a tiny bit of water. So I'm gonna put the fuel filters in. Actually, I'm going to put these return lines on first. Man, those are really on there. Just clean them up a tad. Not going to mess with that because I don't want to get metal in there. Work on that one. Here, these washers I got are too big, or the hole's too small, so we're going to have to drill those out. Back.
Ooh, that was not good. Oh my goodness. Well, those might need some work. Hopefully, I'll just send those and see if they pop. Clean off all these bolts. In case there's any metal on them. This is just, I believe this is the return line and watching Sasquatch's videos, he said this, this the return line goes straight to the crown on these old machines. Pre EPA. Pretty cool. I mean, not cool that they're on the ground, but just that they made machines like that that long, long ago. These old American wrenches made in the USA, super rusty. They came with the dozer, but they're pretty nice. Nice little shorty. these on my hand just so I don't mess anything up. Okay, we got brand new washers on there so it shouldn't be leaking. Could have been a little cleaner on the surface right here but I just don't want to get anything into the injectors. Hopefully I don't just send these off to get them rebuilt. Okay, we got the injector lines on. Next is to fill this up, uh, new filters, and fill it up with diesel, and then change the oil on the injection pump. Service both the air cleaners for the pony motors, the main intake. Um, yeah, I think that'll be it. Oh, put oil in the engine, fill up the radiator fluid, and then we'll be able to try to start this thing finally. Before I fire this up, I'm going to put a bunch of oil on the valve cover, all the cam and everything. Gaskets are so good. I'm going to, I'm going to use them. I got new ones, but these look, these look like they're going to seal them. There's no moisture in there. I'm going to top this off, that way it'll be easier to prime. I'm just double checking my parts real quick. I'm supposed to have all the parts for the fuel filter system and the seals filters and then also the same for the engine oil filter and seals. I believe that is the oil filter. See? CTP one R zero six five nine. Very bigger. Interesting. <laughs> this one might not even work. I don't know. Caterpillar one is one R zero seven two nine. Filters. Come to three of them. This part number is four eight nine dash three one six nine. These are the gaskets for the injection pump. Okay, I gotta drain out about five or six gallons of diesel and flush that out of the engine. I already put that on video of the last flush I did. Now I'm doing the second one. I'm not gonna video that because it's kind of repetitive and it's just gonna be some watery diesel coming out of there. And then I'm gonna let that drain for a while and then we're gonna fill a full back of uh, motor oil. Oh, there's a little pin right there. Ooh, I want to lose that one, huh?
I'm going to line them with that one. Okay. 1,935 hours. Now that's active. So we'll service this pump here. I got some Mobile One 1540 diesel oil. Flush it out, see all that stuff that came out of there. I'll have to flush it out again once it okay. Now we are full. Look like they're having issues getting the pump primed because they have a when I bought it, it has electric lift pump. So hopefully, we can get it primed. Get it up to my house. I'm gonna power wash this thing. Let's get this out of here in case I gotta work on it. Okay, I'm going to go put the drain plug in off camera because that's fully drained now. And we'll service the oil filter and then finish the intake. And I think we can get close to starting this thing. I have to rig up a tank for the diesel, just a temporary tank that's clean. So I don't got to worry about contamination. Forgot to put this on. This is for the coolant temperature, I believe. I ordered this radiator cap from Cat 9B-2883. Looks like a non-pressurized cap. Assembled in Mexico. Part number 1R-0729. I don't know if this one will fit. It'll fit in there, but the hole's a little bit. And this filter is an R0659. Seems to work and it's bigger. Maybe it's for the U series. Okay, I'm gonna fill that full of oil. I just got some cheap Kirkland diesel oil. Um, I'm gonna end up flushing this oil out here a little bit and I'll put some nice Mobile One or some Dello 400 in there. I'll just do this. That should prime the pump, huh? That one's up through the oil filter. I'm not sure how much this holds. I think it holds like three and a half gallons or something. Yeah, it's going to fill up. Yeah, that thing's pumped full of oil. I don't think it's as you do have to be careful with these speedy flows. They are quick. You can overflow real quick. They got this little hole so it breathes. Any dirt in there. Okay, let's start dumping some oil on this beast. I'm going to do two gallons and then chuck the oil level. So she holds some oil. It's not even registering with two gallons. Well, a little bit.
Okay, yeah. Okay, we got plenty of oil. Once that pump primes, it's gonna go down probably like a half a quart, so. I just noticed the grease circ for the water pump is right there. I stabbed it with the screwdriver and sprayed it with PB Blaster, hoping that it's gonna work. Wheel bearing grease, but I don't have my other grease gun on me. One. You guys take the grease. Gonna do four pumps. I don't know how much it's supposed to take, but I don't want to blow out a seal or something. I'm gonna use some gasket sealant on this intake because I don't have a gasket and uh, running out of time here. It's gonna get dark soon. Really like to see if this thing's gonna fire up. So I'm gonna come back later and I'll put a put a gasket on here, but this should work fine for now. That actually looks decent. I'm not gonna mess with that. That should be should be fine for now. the pony motor one because that is nasty it's gonna take some time okay off camera I uh, was banging this thing around and I got most of the stuff out of it then it decided to break on me <laughs> so I think I'm gonna call this clean enough for now I might be able to spot weld that again but got most of the stuff out of there Organic material, pine needles. Really need some air pressures. Or something.
leave this off in case I need to kill it if we get a runaway. Next step is putting oil. Four B dash thirty four thirty eight. Looks better than it did, so kind of suspect with that gasket because I reused it. Hopefully, that sealed. Don't see anything dripping. Guess we can check uh, oil and see if there's water in it. Hope not. Come on. Looks pretty clean, no water. Okay, now we can rig up this tank. cheap inline fuel filter from Amazon so it'll snap really easy so we'll be careful. That should be sealed. I actually bought this for my diesel heater but I'm gonna use it for the dozer for now just so we make sure we have some fresh fuel. How did they expect you to get this pet cock out? Man. <laughs> How am I supposed to do this? Wow. I guess I gotta fish this in there with a wire or something. <laughs> This is ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. 
tracks. No clue. Maybe there's a way to like put it in there. <laughs> Well, I found a little piece of wire, maybe I could do that. Whoa, look at that, I got it. Oh my goodness. Not recommend this. <laughs> At least we know we're getting nice clean fuel and it's pretty high up so the gravity should be all right. I was told from some old timer mechanics that the lift pump on these machines are super weak so it's really good to have a full tank of gas. But this one has a lift pump already so I'm guessing they're already having issues with the fuel since they did that. Then if it actually runs, I will clean out the tank. All right, we're gonna top this thing off with diesel. Someday I'll get a transfer pump and a tank. Um, I've been looking in the marketplace, but they're usually about 600 bucks plus and they're real old. Or they're about 1200 bucks at the store. So hopefully I'll find one for a good deal pretty soon. So we'll top this all the way off so it has some gravity flow. Now we have nice clean diesel. And I would buy a red diesel, but where I'm located, uh, the red diesel costs the same as uh, the diesel at the reservation. So you got to open up an account with Pacific Pride, and um, yeah, I got to call them and see if they can give me a discount or something. Otherwise, I might as well just go to the casino, and uh, I can pay cash for, for gas, and it's the same price as red diesel, so it's kind of pointless. We've got a little bit of fuel pressure because the lift pump's on.
probably fouled. Plug looks pretty good on this side. What is going on here? Okay, so I got a brand new battery on it. Uh, I think the other battery I had was, um, it didn't have a good enough charge. So I, my theory was since this, uh, since the coils on the weak side on this pony motor, um, hopefully it'll spin a little faster and get better spark. And then I went to top off the tank on the pony motor, but it was already full and the gas was pretty nice and clear looking. So let's see if it'll fire this time. See what the plug's looking like. Might not be getting gas. Should have been fouled by now, I'm thinking. I pulled the top of the intake off for the carburetor on the pony motor. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of starting fluid just to see if I get anything. This is fully choked. getting a bunch of gas and the plugs are fouled weird so these are both pretty fouled now we're getting gas I guess I'm gonna clean these up with a torch and see what'll happen Those are nice and clean now. I'm gonna go check the pony engine oil. Make sure it's not getting too much gas in it. So somehow the pony motor got flooded real quick. It wasn't getting gas. So you see how it's all the way up here? And I got Dello in there and it's really watery. So it flooded out real quick like for some reason. So I'm gonna drain this oil and put some fresh oil in there real quick while those spark plugs are cooling off because you don't want to run this with that kind of oil and plus the gas oil can just be found out the spark plug so it won't even fire okay I just changed the oil on the pony motor just took a minute and now it's right over full so and it's it's got some thickness to it so now we can put those plugs in and hopefully this thing will fire. We got the spark plugs in nice and clean with the torch. I flushed out the oil on the pony because it did get flooded for some reason. It seemed like it wasn't getting gas and all of a sudden just it got a bunch of gas and flooded out. So I think it's really easy to flood out because it has a really weak uh, coil. So check the spark on the plugs. They're sparking great. So I think they were wet fouled and with the new battery on there, I'm pretty sure it's gonna fire now. So I have the intake off just in case I gotta get some ether in there just to see if it's getting gas, but it seemed like it wet fouled them there for a second ago. So I'm gonna try to start it with uh, the gas off just to see if it'll pop, just to help uh, not flood it. And then I'll slowly turn on the gas. So 
weird design, but it seems like the compression pushes back into the carburetor, so it might need this to run. Okay, I think the carburetor, something's weird. It's either floods it out or it doesn't get any gas. So I'm gonna keep tinkering on it. Let you know if I can get it fired. Running out of batteries here and the light's about to go out. So it should come right out now. Oh crap, like. Oh. This floats like ancient. Hmm. Float seems like it's working still. You can see that's pretty nasty rusty in there. It's a weird ass carburetor, man. Some nasty gas in there. You only need to get this screw out the bottom. That is gonna be really hard. I'll put this governor thing right in the way so you can't get the screwdriver to drain this nasty gas out of here. Alright, well, I'm gonna break clean this. I'm actually gonna flood that with gas real quick. Running out of brake cleaner. This shorty won't fit either. Huh? Oh, Super ancient. Be careful with this gas. <sighs> well, everything looks good to me. It's just this float looks ancient. I'm gonna see if it still floats. Quick test here, real quick. It's still floating. Turns or something like that. Okay, well, I did have a bunch of crud in the bottom and I flushed it out. Uh, I don't know. Might still be plugged up. Just, I can't even get in there to work on it, so. It's kind of a pain in my butt. You can't even get your hands in here. This is like Japanese, man. Okay, we got jumper cable.
We're not getting any fuel. I might have to just tear this cover off tomorrow by throwing up this motor. 